it is my intention to help others who are either in relationships or have moved on and have had past relationships where they do not have full closure or understanding or love and acceptance or appreciation for what happened, why it happened, the purpose it served and all the goodness involved in it. Because it's so easy for us to look back in, in our life and our relationships especially where we opened our heart, we had hopes, dreams and expectations and then it all broke down and fell apart and we were left with bitterness, sadness, and resentment and blame. Now those things are human natural emotions and they're understandable. But as we learn and grow, everyone, we transmute and transform them. And that can be called alchemy or it can, I just like call it whatever. Simple thing, learning and growing. It's truly that. And we reach higher states of energy and vibration. We grow up, we mature inwardly, spiritual involvement. And we then, um, we then get to like be free, everyone, to move on and create the life that we truly want and deserve, deserve and desire. Because when we have blocks and we are hanging on to unresolved emotions and perceptions and feelings and even unresolved dreams, hopes and expectations that are long gone, we are hindered and it's like carrying a big sack on our back. So it means we're closed off to new, really like happier relationships, more compatible partnerships, um, a better, freer, happier, more joyous life. Now we all want that. We all deserve that. We're all worthy of that. So in this video, I want to just talk about some of the things that I really like and appreciate and admire and even some of the pain potentially too of what happened in uh, some of my last relationships, the last two main ones. So one, I just want to start by saying that like I definitely love and appreciate my past partners. My last one, okay, it ended in at the time hurt and like um, heartbreak for me. It triggered a lot of emotions from my childhood that hadn't had been buried underneath the surface for many years. It turned out to be a fantastic thing. Um, the lovely lady, she did what she had to do. Um, she decided to go her way and depart the relationship. And at the time I was a bit like, you know, insecure, needy and clingy. And I was slow to let go. Um, and she did what she wanted, she did what she had to. And I'm glad she did. And it worked out for everyone's best benefit. Um, I know I worked out for my best benefit and no doubt, I'm sure she's definitely happy now. <laughs> We don't really talk much personally, but that's good. It's all good. I don't need to be in, in talk. So she, what, what I'm most happy with my last relationship is, and I'd like you to practice this in your past relationships. What were you happiest about? What do you appreciate about that person the most? I love the fact that I got to live in the Canary Islands in La Palma for three months, two years ago, which is fantastic. I loved living in the Canary Islands, a beautiful island, tropical, and um, summer or spring all year round, just northwest of Africa. She made me lovely raw salads and uh, made even tea for me sometimes, like chaga, decoction tea. Um, we traveled to Thailand together. That wasn't the happiest trip, but at least it was exciting. And we got to see some nice things a little bit. Yeah. Um, started off really good, close, excited, passionate, intimate. <laughs> yeah, there's some issues with communication and unspoken hopes, dreams, expectations, and wants, especially wants and expectations. So when there's a communicational breakdown and there's no intimacy there, everybody, it, it leads to just disappointment and you blame the other person for not being able to read your mind. And when there's unresolved issues from your past, um, you, you, you sort of like enact that on or even project and blame another person. So, um, um, this lovely lady and myself have nobody to blame. We both did, we were sort of almost destined to have to do based on where we were, everything we were carrying in our life. The programming that we were carrying, the hurts that we were carrying, the pain, the trauma and the hurts, the programming. And then just like all of our life's experience we were carrying. So we did our best, everyone does their best. When we realize that everyone's doing their best, based on where they are and what they're working with, where they're coming from, it allows us to have more understanding and understanding brings compassion. Now, understanding and compassion doesn't need to bring lethargy, which is like 
in action when action is required. Because at the end of the day, even not doing anything is a form of action. Like inaction is an action. Like not going to the shop when you need to buy food, for example, that's an action of staying in the house. So um, having understanding and compassion only empowers you to take greater action born from wisdom and heart-centered perceptions and thoughts. So it's vital to learn your lessons, everyone. If you do not learn your lessons, you're just going to keep recycling similar relationships and connections with different people. So a lot of people do jump out of a relationship sometimes and blame the other person for being so bad. But when they have unresolved issues, they just bring themselves into the next relationship. And then the cycle, similar cycles and patterns happen all over again. So <clears throat> the best relationships to have is the one with yourself and to be happy first and not needing to be in a relationship. Just be happy as Larry, happy as Sally, happy as Larry, uh, if you're a male or female. Um, and to love and appreciate your life and to be happy and thriving and glowing as much as you can. So therefore you don't put all your stuff and like onto another person, like heal me, fix me, make me happy. That's obviously a recipe for disaster, which so many of us do. And like, you know, I've kind of, I've done that like in the past, basically speaking, 100%. And obviously it doesn't work out very good. So self-awareness and wisdom and healing is what it's all about, everybody. That's what all of life is all about. Um, Oh, I love being alive. It feels so good to be alive. It's so good to have inner peace, everyone. Inner peace is probably probably the greatest blessing you could have. Um, it's not about having stuff. It's about having inner peace first. Because then when you have inner peace and you get stuff, and then you can appreciate stuff and love stuff, and you're not attached to the stuff coming and going, etc. Um, you can live from your heart if people or things or relationships change or grow or leave. But what's the point in having loads of stuff and there's no inner peace and you're stressed or sad or depressed or even some people, many, many, um, many famous people you see in the tabloids, they even like, you know, they're like, they're, they're suicidal. And that's like, that, that could be a sad case, obviously. You know, you don't want that. So it's all about learning, growing and healing everyone. That's what I want to say. So um, in my previous relationship, like that was like, that was my longest relationship. Really loved this person totally. I even, the relationship that I just finished talking about, I love this woman too. Like as un as an unconditional person, like as a person, we have it's in our heart to unconditionally love. That doesn't mean you have to talk to the person. It doesn't mean you need to hear from them. It doesn't mean all it means is you care for them. <laughs> You're you have an interest in them if they happen to talk. Um, it's like like children have a natural unconditional state where they they look at a flower and they love it and like you know they look at a dog and ah they're open you know they feel good feelings towards something. So that's what unconditional love is. You know, it's a natural state. But it's only toxins in our food being not looking after ourselves and not loving ourselves and also then programming and trauma conditioning and pain that, that stop us from feeling the state of love that we naturally feel for all beings. So for me, um, yeah, my natural state obviously is love. I know that from personal experience that nobody can argue. Um, and I just feel open towards pretty much everybody and everything, the insects, the animals, the microorganisms, then the, the animals and the people. And people are my friends and family, basically speaking. So if you like my videos, everyone, please do give it a like. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. I'm, I'm still going to continue the video. I'm just letting you know. Appreciate it. any likes or questions or comments and shares, especially as well. It's lovely when you share it with like children or even like teenagers because they're more newer into the world. Obviously, not all of them are appropriate necessarily for children, but at least for teenagers, they are usually. My last relationship, she definitely did loads of cooking. The previous one, she did loads of cooking for me. Brilliant vegan cook. She was like, she did her best like me. We came a bit head to head for sure. A lot of things we both needed to learn and grow. So for me, I call both of them definitely soul agreements or soul contracts. Um, I mean, I'm in a relationship now, and it's like definitely more, more happier, joyous, joyous one. But that's only because I did my learning and growing from previous relationships. So I have a lot to thank and owe. Like I don't really owe my previous relationship stuff, but uh, um, in a way, you know, I appreciate and value what I learned and what they shared with me and what they taught me, even what they triggered in me. For, absolutely, what they triggered in me, because if they didn't trigger in me what was triggered for healing then I would have had a whole lot of blocks, which would block me from having a free, happy, joyous relationship. So 
Yeah, I, what I want from you in this video is for you to be able to talk freedomly and happily in your heart about your past people in your life at college Japan. It doesn't have to be a relationship, it could be anybody. Like It could be an acquaintance, family, friend, or a romantic relationship. When you get to the stage of having love, gratitude, and peace towards your exes or previous people in your life, and past events that are painful, like losses, like for example, losing all, all your money, or losing your home, or losing a loved one, or losing your health, it takes time to accept this and to grieve and to understand, to see the positives and to potentially even see that everything happens for a reason, for our highest good potentially. And there's no mistakes in the universe. So it's hard to get through this if you're feeling very hurt and or angry or upset. But eventually there does come a time where we get to see through the eyes of source instead of the eyes of the program to hurt human. So the program to hurt human has a lot of limited perceptions and beliefs, whereas the higher self source creature, whatever you might call it, consciousness that we are, that aspect of us that, that lives in us, that is us. See, there's two, there's two sort of type of perceptions in us. There's that higher self source, and then there's the, the, um, the human programmed hurt part. So in any situation, we always have an emotion because we always have a perception. But if you can, the, the, the secret everyone is to ask yourself, which, through which one am I perceiving this situation through? Is it my hurt programmed self? Or is it through a higher self source perspective? Um, the higher self source perspective. So when you're hurt in, in this place, you can slowly gradually become aware and slowly shift and pull yourself over here. And as you pull yourself over there, you get to see things with more unconditional love and like a, a deeper or spiritual understanding. Um, the roles, souls come into this world to play for each other for our growth, our hurt, our, tra our like trauma, hurt or pain, our experiences, our lessons, um, our, our helping each other. It's like it's deeply good, everybody. It's deeply good in the eyes of source. But obviously in the human limited hurt program perspective, we have a whole lot of beliefs that anything that we don't like that happens is a bad thing. And then it obviously makes it an upset emotion. But if we can see from the heart and the higher perspective, we get to love better. We get to connect to who we truly are. It's like, I like to call it alignment. It's like a nice word for me. But you can call it any word you want. You can call it roses and leaves, flower petals. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I really love and appreciate all the travel I did with my second last partner. We traveled to the, we traveled to the Caribbean, we traveled to Thailand, we traveled to Bali, we lived, we, we lived in Ireland, um, where else did we live? In the Irish countryside, in the Irish city center, we lived in the suburbs in Ireland. <laughs> my favorite part is she made me loads of lovely food from her heart. She spent so much time and effort being so kind and caring for me. She was extremely good in that way. I, I didn't understand that was her love language at the time. See, some of us have this five love languages and we all have one or two predominant love languages, especially one. See, my love language is um, physical touch, intimacy, physical touch, physical intimacy and affection physically. And my second, which is up there, is words of love, gratitude and appreciation and fondness and just like kind, happy, friendly words, like loving words. For me, I love to hear that, especially being touched like hugs, kisses, playfulness, tickling, um, sexual, it doesn't have to be sexual though, really sexual is a little bit different, like it could be holding hands or cuddling or just being close on the sofa, like that, somebody kissing you, expressing love physically, it doesn't have to be even romantic, it's usually non-sexual, so, um, her, my second last partner, her love language was um, gifts, um, acts of service, that's what it's called, acts of service, so she'd do things for me. And what she loved to do and express her love for me and care was to make me lovely, delicious food that she put her heart and soul into her energy. Um, and I can see even my last partner to a degree, active service was her love language too. So it was very important to have 
a compatibility or at least an understanding. Understanding is the most important thing. You do not have to have the same love languages. You have to have an understanding of each other's love languages so you can feed it and make the other person feel love in their love languages. For example, if I knew that back then, I would have expressed how deeply awesome it was for her to make this food. Like, obviously, I was saying thanks. But to know it deeper and properly, you express it in a different, deeper way. And if she, if they... If they uh, understood my love languages, then they could have given me more loving words and physical, like massage, touch, affection, physical intimacy. But there was pain in those relationships. That doesn't matter. We all did our best. Yeah. yeah that's all I really want to say. But I'm not sure what else to say now. But when you do fix up your relationships and learn your lessons learn and grow life just becomes a treat <laughs> if you could so much better so much more freedom and happiness and playfulness and joy and uh, that's the journey of life so i hope you have a really good time learning from this video and uh, have a great time um, just getting better and happier in your life um, yeah so have a beautiful day everyone don't forget if you need any one-to-one -one help just mess me personally, as I love to do that work, especially. Have a nice day, everyone.